Hi everybody, my name is Monica Cesarato, a food and travel blogger in Venice. Welcome to Venice Meets, a series of live chats from Instagram, every day at 6 p.m. CET. Today, I will meet Romana Brunerotto, sommelier, tour leader and blogger from Venice. Here she goes. Ciao carissima, passa un po' la... Ok, vedo, i capelli sono cresciuti anche i tuoi, vedo. Io ho dovuto sistemarmi così, e quindi... You look beautiful, you look beautiful. So, I was telling everybody, we decided that with you, since you love reading, we might as well use you and talk about books. Is that right? Ok. So, obviously, because both me and you write about Venice, there have got to be books about Venice. Ok, so for the next half hour or so, go. I'll ask questions. Can you translate to what you prefer? No, you speak in English, darling. Ok, ok, no problem. <laughs> ok, so I have a very big amount of book to... <laughs> for you. That's fine. As long as you can tell us, as long as you can tell us how people can order them, who we offer, if you want to read a little bit as well. Ok, I assume that all on Amazon. Okay. Okay. No problem. Ok. okay. Go, you start. Who do you want to start? And if you have more information than me, for sure you can add it. Of course. Uh, one little thing, Romana. Yes. Uh, I tell you could turn the light on because it's a bit dark. Okay. <laughs> uh, we can see the dark. Okay, all right. Okay, never mind. All right. Go on then. Allora, uh, so, <laughs> so, so let's start from uh, very uh, nice books about Venice and very easy for English or Italian people reading and the books are the ones can you can you see the ones so I start with that Monica had the same <laughs> <laughs> and I got already yes. one book I want to show oh go on you talk about it and I'll tell you all about that yeah so they are three books actually I don't know if there is another one I don't know no no it's free it's free it's free it's a trilogy so they it's have three beautiful books I will uh, I will show you uh, <laughs> going on this way um, about Venice and they are very very nice because they are a book about a uh, photographer yeah, so they are a book of photos of Venice uh, they are by our friend uh, <laughs> Joan Lockwood the, jo Rock Rock the pronunciation okay and, uh, yes uh, and so Joan is a very uh, is a people that love so much Venice that, that she decided to print that book for a uh, show to the, to the world, to the globe, uh, the beautiful of Venice. Uh, the books are, yeah, photographic books, but they are different one from another. I think that, uh, that probably that was the first one. I don't yes, show that the, was the, the first one. Yes, that is called The Dream of Venice. So they are a lot of beautiful pictures about, uh, about Venice. Yes, so, uh, the, 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 the pictures on that book are by Charles Christopher, but he's uh, one of the most famous photographers, American photographers. Uh, perfect. And there is also a little, uh, I say, uh, introduction or in to the photo. So the little yeah, text that explains you something about uh, photos and the feeling about Venice. No, wait, 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 wait. You're leaving out the most important thing about that book. But all the introduction of all the pictures, they're done by famous people. Uh, and I'm talking about this Woody Allen, Julie... Uh, Christy, yes, uh, and uh, you know they're very famous people, and uh, you know they uh, they very kindly gave this all of this for free. Okay, so we have okay. added more information just for you. And the other one is Venice architecture. As you yes, can see here on the picture, uh, the photos are by Ricardo del Cal, so a nice yes. uh, photographer. So uh, even big, I found something about which I just was showing you. Yeah. And also in this case, you have a text on, on the other yeah. side. Um, text are um, the most the most famous architects in the world. Yes, like so, Tadao Ando and some others. Yes, yeah, right. yeah, I'm a lover. I'm a lover of Dream of Venice, as you know. So that's why. I love you. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> and then the last one is this that uh, Monica and Joan presented uh, two years ago. Yeah, actually, more or less, yes. Yes, two years. three years about uh, um, Venice in black and white. So 
so it's a book about photographs again in Venice, but uh, black and white photos. Yes. Different photographers and the beautiful introduction uh, introduction, sorry, about uh, of uh, Tiziano Scarpa. Uh, yes. And they are very, very nice. All these books are very important information because Monica was asking about how to find books are available on Amazon. Amazon. Oh, yes. So you can order and you can receive. Uh, in Italy, we have now some uh, yeah, different kind of um, delivery of uh, food and books by Amazon, but I'm sure that in uh, so it's not uh, that you can order and we are seeing the next week. One thing that is particular about about Dream of Venice uh, black and white is that all the picture. Um, the text is by the introduction is by Carlo, um, Carlo Scappa, uh, Tiziano Scappa, excuse me. Uh, there is uh, a little dedication by Gianni Berengo, okay? But all the pictures are interesting because they are photographers from all over the world. Some are professional, some are just hobbies. And Joanna uh, just did like a little, let's say, like a competition. She just asked people, send me a picture in black and white. It's not to have certain requirements as in size and everything but it could have been a uh, photo from a camera it could have been a photo from a uh, phone it didn't matter uh it could have been without filter of it just send me the picture in black and white and then i'll pick those that you know with a, a panel of people and um yes it's an amazing book and it's very interesting because uh, uh, uh the, most of the people in the book are people from venice so yes, they're from all over the world, but she actually gave priority to uh, Venetian people. So a lot of Venetian photographers, a lot of normal people are in there, and a lot of people of Venice are in the photo. I got to say, my favorite, apart from the one where Marisa is in, obviously, is the one with the little, I don't know, can you see? The yeah. one with the child, that's by Christina Marson. And I think this is just uh, the essence of Venice. And I, after what's happening right now, I hope that's what Venice will come out as with local people. So yes, so, as well. But uh, you know, this is absolutely one of my favorite. And one important thing about the books, all free, is that uh, they are uh, uh, all the money that is covered, taken away, but of course, the expenses and everything. All the profits are given to different kind of association, uh, say Venice, Perini uh, Stampalia, uh, and I can't remember this one uh, where it's going to be. It's going to some other association, so it's all non profit. Okay, good. Sorry, did Perfect. my little. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> so, Anna, going ahead, another book yes. is very famous. I have, I have in Italian, but there is all this, the translation in English. Yes. Uh, Venezia and Pesha, we were talking about the Tiziano Scarpa, no? So Venezia yes, somebody Pesha. actually just wrote on Facebook, Tell me, sure you talk about Venezia's a fish. We couldn't miss Venezia's a fish, it's not a link. And it's nice, such a nice person as well. I think that is very, very old, my copy. No, it was a present, very nice, about 20 years ago. <laughs> so it's very, very old. Are you a little bit that you might want to read? Oh, is it Italian, is it? Oh, yeah, okay, you can find it. No, no, no. Okay. Don't want to read nothing, but it's a very strange say, guide of Venice uh, because it's very connected with the feeling of the of Tiziano Scarpa, obviously. So I think it's for the people that uh, also for the people that are coming for the first time, it's a very good introduction to the city, a view of the city, an overview of the city that could be very useful for the people coming. So not the the guide with the date of the monuments and all the yeah artistic stuff that would be nice to see when you are in front. Of the buildings, but this one is uh, very nice, like an introduction of, uh, of yes. the city. And Tiziano is a very interesting person. He was actually one of the people that introduced the book of Joanne two years ago. He gave us an interview, and he's an amazing journalist, he's an amazing writer. He's amazing, he's just I amazing. The book is very, I say, modern, even if yes. uh, when we are not passed by. So, yeah, so I, I suggest you to, to, to read this book. And then there are a series of books of one uh, friend of us that is uh, <clears throat> Alberto Tosofei. Oh, <laughs> so this one is in Italian because I think that uh, oh, I, I probably I borrow some books to my colleagues about the mysteries and the other stuff. And Alberto Tosofei, Alberto Tosofei is an amazing, amazing writer and also a storyteller. 
Um, yes. This, for example, is about uh, mysteries in Ven in Ven the Veneto uh, region. But there are also a lot of different books about uh, uh, the ghost and uh, mysteries in Venice. Uh, the, the Grand Canal, there is a, a story of a mystery story of the Grand Canal, uh, as what you can see, and most of them uh, they were translated in uh, English or in yes. Spanish. Uh, I think it was, a book. was there also a book that was some kind of like a treasure hunt or something like that? Uh, the Rui stuff, yeah. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Yeah. But most yeah. of them are very nice, so it's not, it's just if you are in Venice and you can read it, but also if you are at home and just want to have fun. Yeah, I, li I like I like Alberto because uh, he's a mix between uh, facts, uh, you know, facts, so history, but also a lot of oral legends and stories that he's covered by talking to the people, yeah. uh, you know, the old people and so on, and he's put it down, and he's finally put it down uh, on paper because a lot of times all these stories we actually hear them as kids and stuff, but it wasn't written anywhere. So it's yeah, 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 that's true. Also, when I'm, I'm working with my guests, with the clients. Uh, uh, sometimes I use some of these stories of, uh, of Alberto Tuzufe, and most of them are connected, as you can imagine, with the devil stuff. Yeah, of course, yes. Yeah, everything is connected with devil. They say to me, yes, like, not, not everything, but uh, yeah, sometimes we have to talk about a lot of, about uh, devil in Venice. And it's interesting because Alberto right now, every night here in Italy, where you can watch on Facebook anyway, he's in Italian, of course, but if you want to learn a bit of Italian, he's doing, um, what's it called, Lacca de Cameron. So every evening at midnight, he's uh, going and he talks about Venice and legends and stuff. So it's quite good. Cool. Uh, uh, you gone? You're gone. No, no, it's You're gone. Yeah, start again. Yes. Uh, page that is called Venezia in a minute, Venice in a minute, and yes. the video of that, uh, of that page are subtitles in English. Ah, oh, fantastic, so the people can watch it. Yeah. Hold on, connect yourself before you yeah. get it. <laughs> yes. How can you climb on a live feed and don't think about that? <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, then there is another very famous book, also this one is translated in English. But is this one? Mm -hmm. Oh yes. Or, yes. Uh, the book is connected with the um, Porto Maltese. That is uh, what? What the character? Yes, probably a character about. Yes. Uh, yes. Comic invented, comic by, comic. invented by. Ah, sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, so this book is a sort of uh, is a guide of. Um, of Venice, uh, following this another say, uh, following different itineraries. So also in this case, you can find some uh, say mysteries, some legends of Venice, uh, um, some very strange stories. But there are also some uh, recipes. So you can also find some in some recipes. Uh, you have uh, maps of the city. <laughs> So it's very nice also also this one too. And is, it, is this in English too? Yes, yes. Yeah, it's okay. very, also this one is a very old book. And so what's the title again? Uh, it's Corto Sconto. Okay. Fan, uh, itinerari Fantastici Nascosti di Corto Maltese a Venezia. <clears throat> okay, so the, the, yeah, the cover is very famous, so that is very, very easy to find it. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then uh, we have something regarding Gardens. Oh, nice! Oh, yes. well, so this one is in English, so okay. I mean, everything, everything in Italian, but everyone you can find in English on Amazon and uh, on the distribution. So this book was uh, printed some years ago, and it's a very interesting book about gardens in Venice because most of the people they think that we don't have gardens in the city. Exactly. Uh, that is not true because we have a lot of gardens, but uh, not thinking about uh, the real gardens or the in other gardens, the other gardens are inside, I say, inside of the buildings. In well, they are within walls, are they? And yes. that's for protection because otherwise the water will be taken away, you know, as soon as you have a bit of aqua, and yes. all the plants will be gone yes, and destroyed. That is, that is true. So, in, uh, in this book, you can find also all the beautiful gardens, yeah, for example, this one, uh, uh, where they are, if they are open to the visitor, or uh, mm -hmm. you, you have to to call someone or, or write someone that is very interesting. Uh, 
they are divided in the different part of Venice, so you can um, build an according itinerary to, for you. Yeah. Sorry. According to the district. Yeah. Yes. Um, also inside of the hotels, you can find someone, uh, some some of the garden. So they are. I think it's a very nice, uh, uh, different view of Venice. You so know that talking about, okay, talking about gardens then. Okay, so let's go into this a little bit because this is a bit easy to talk about this. Yeah. For example, my favorite hidden gardens, but I'm not sure if it, if you can still go in. But I remember when I was young, you could because it was my school. Uh, it is uh, the gardens of uh, uh, at the back of Algarotti, the Casavorniano, the Savornian gardens. Okay, I think it's still open as public gardens. I'm not yeah. sure what place they are. I haven't been in years, but I remember back in my days, it was a hidden, beautiful gardens. Yeah. Very only, only few locals knew about it, but tourists didn't know. And it was really, really nice to go and sit there to have, you know, when it was uh, hot and uh, whatever. What about your favorite hidden garden that is free? You know, well, no, you know, there's not too many people watching, so. Uh, <laughs> I think that they have two favorites. One is open because it's the garden of the Cipriani Hotel at, okay. uh, at La Giudecca. I mean, at the end of the island of La Giudecca, you have the Cipriani that is very famous. And the garden inside is very, very beautiful. When they're in, the, in amount, uh, if they are able to open, there will be a beautiful, uh, beautiful flowers, beautiful, uh, beautiful and it's yeah. actually free. You can actually walk in even if you're not staying in Cipriani. Yeah, you can ask. They are very nice. Okay. Okay. <laughs> you well, can well. go to have a cocktail or just for a yeah, just for a okay. day. So if you That's are nice. kind, they will um, they will sure let you let you go in. Um, and also, you have another one that I saw just one time in a very rainy day. That it was not the beautiful moment to see it. That is uh, at La Giudecca too, uh, mm -hmm. and it is a, a garden uh, when a lady from German uh, has, uh, I, I don't remember how many different kind of roses. Oh, so nice. Is, is, so this is private one, but also the lady opens sometimes, so if you ask wow. and organize with a little group, you can, go, you can go inside. And yes. it's incredible because, uh, yeah, the different kind of roses and the lady is uh, it's, it's quite it's amazing. Because she says that, that, that yeah, she's not that she's not the person that decided when to put the different kind of roses, but are the roses asking where to? Oh where wow, to go. that's cool. That's nice. So it's very, it's very nice. And because of what what was very nice is that they open again the gardens at the back of St. Mark's. It was about time, uh, and they I I personally I like to have that. You know, we went together. It was yeah. even a nice place. I can just imagine what it, do you remember we actually went we thought oh it must be it must be beautiful when spring comes and we're not gonna get to see it but never mind that but i yeah, so, yeah you know this is the best moment so i, I hope that hopefully. we can exit a little bit yeah <laughs> and i got to say is i was really impressed with the job they done i loved the way he said yeah. and i love all the, the coffee bar now there and I'm happy they open there. And another place I think is only tiny is Serra dei Giardini. I, I like it in the blue area there. As well. So it is true. There are a lot of gardens in Venice, just people don't actually know about it. Good. Yes. Okay. Yes. Next. So I have the, la the last two ones. Okay. Go slowly. Go huh? slowly. Okay. <laughs> so this one uh, is. Uh, Guida la Venezia di Belle. Can you, oh. can you translate it? Yes, the guide to a rebel Venice. Yes, so it, the, this one is a different guide. I know that I'm using I can hear from the title. The title. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So, what it is, uh, it's an introduction of the place of Venice that were connected with the, a lot of history, uh, most of the history of the, two, uh, the, of the last two centuries. So now okay. We, yeah, mm -hmm. the last two centuries, and they okay. are connected with the fight that the people uh, they have to do for. Uh, uh, Ooh, from the eighteen hundreds upwards to become yes. independent yes. Yes. after the falling of the Venetian Republic. So all okay. the fight that the Venetian they have to do to conquer uh, uh, freedom or to have more. Uh, oh dear, uh, divinity, Sorry. <laughs> uh, right. Right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. To get rights. Um, yeah. And so it's very, it's very interesting to read it because uh, it, it's, 
actually part of a story that I never know. So it's not the story that you learn at school of or the, the story we that never met, we never managed to get to the point because you we're always uh, studying, 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 and you just about do the 1800s, the 1900s, maybe the new schools, but at our times, we I don't remember, it was just a little. Yeah, it does and, and there are a lot of a uh, lot of different places in Venice that you, that you can uh, that that you can discover in a different way. Uh, for example, can you, like, pick one? can you pick one from that guide and read something? Can you pick one? Ne scegli uno, ce lo ce lo leggi. Ah, most of them are connected with the, uh, the last century, I have to say. Uh, it's very interesting because they are also little maps, so you can... Uh, oh, cool! Yeah, on the district you have the, they point it out where to, where to go. Oh, uh, you find me... <laughs> okay, no, no, I'm, I was not prepared about that, but... Uh, ah, for example, uh, this, no. is, this is connected with uh, a friend of us. That okay. Is, um, that is in Via Garibaldi. Uh, okay. Castello and tells about the stories and um, I say the, the, the stories and the life of the Imperialese. Oh, okay. So <laughs> I'm going to that I haven't seen yet, so I don't think she's watching us at the moment. Uh, we talked to us, but uh, we, we know that our friend Marisa Convento is uh, uh, one of the yeah, most uh, well known Imperialese, Imperialese in Venice. And this part tells about the story of this district that was so connected with this uh, kind of war. Uh, yeah. And also there is, all the, there is also the song that my ah. <laughs> yeah. So okay. that is the song oh, that uh, we know very well. Um, and also there is the link with the, with the song that you can listen on the, on the website. Oh, so cool. some years ago when the book was uh, printed, uh, the uh, the two ladies that are the, yeah, the writers of the mm -hmm. of the book they organized also some visits of Venice in this uh, following the itinerary uh, and the visit was on the boat so they were moving on the rowing mm -hmm. boat and see the different part of Venice so I think mm -hmm. also this one is translated in English. Who's the author? Who are the authors? Uh, they are Beatrice Barzaghi and Maria Siano. And the garden ones? And the garden ones? The garden. The garden, the other one, the other oh, book. Sorry, the garden, sorry. Uh, the garden ones uh, is uh, by uh, Maria Grazia D'Amico, who okay. is the president of uh, an association about gardens in Venice. So oh. it's the same association, we don't tell that, but it's important. It's the same association that organizes every year in the spring and in the fall time uh, the visit of some gardens in the city where you can, uh, you can reserve your place. Is that wigwam? Is that wigwam? Yes, we gardens. Okay. Yeah. Uh, they organize uh, this visit in the this visit in the different different gardens of Venice, uh, the hidden gardens. So they are yeah. gardens that are not uh, open to the public, or and they are very very interesting. Every time I try to go because I saw uh, all the time different gardens, uh, and also because the people that are guiding the tour are very specific in botanic and in yes. the history of the garden. So of they course. are very very nice. Okay, and then we are at the last book that was printed yes. uh, only yeah, a few months ago. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Ah. Well, this one is in English, so you can find it. Uh, the book, the book is the author of the book is um, a friend of mine. I know Fabrizio from uh, yeah a lot of years ago, uh, and uh, is uh, the title Fabrizio Berger. Mm -hmm. <laughs> The um, so, sorry, uh, the title of the book in Italian is A Venezia si cammina in Pile Indiana, and in English is in, in Venice where we walk in a single line. So, uh, this, this is a, a quite strange book, I say, because it's not a guide of Venice, I think it's more a guide for the people that want to relocate in Venice. I know ah. a lot of, uh, yeah, because I. I, it's not a guide where you can find the monuments or that kind of stuff, but it's a guide, for example, I just opened this, no? it's about uh, rubbish, no? spazzatura e gestini. So it's a bit more about lifestyle, how to yeah. live, how to, uh, you know, what life is in Venice. It's not telling you where to go, it's how to behave in a way. No, no, no. It's, it's, the, this is why I tell, I tell no, it's a, Sort of, if you want to relocate in Venice, it would be a good, uh, a good reading. 
but also for the people that are here for some visits, no problem. Uh, so um, Fabrizio, explain you what to do in the different uh, kind of uh, uh, moments of the, of the where you can, uh, yeah, where you are. I uh, was thinking if, uh, so for example, this is about the different kind of uh, boats that mm -hmm. we have that we have in Venice uh, and also it's very nice because Fabrizio is not from is not born in Venice but he's, he's here from the time of the university uh, okay. and uh, and in the guide in this guide in this book uh, he also explain uh, the way of thinking of the Venetian no? for example like in the other part of Italy when you have to meet someone for yeah discussing about business or something like that uh, you say okay let's go for a coffee uh, and in Venice, we say, okay, let's meet for a spritz. <laughs> for an omelet. Obviously, you can order also prosecco. It's not uh, mandatory to order a spritz. But it's a different kind of guy in Venice. Yeah, let's say, uh, yeah, I got to say, yeah, nobody ever asked me to meet them in the morning. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly. But from 11, you can drink spritz. It's not, yeah. <laughs> even yeah, if you, yeah. uh, but if you eat something beside, but, uh, but you can eat. And also the different time, uh, consideration of time in Venice, no? Oh, because uh, when you have to meet someone, now you say, okay, I'm here in 20 minutes, but it happened that you meet uh, someone going, no? because we are walking, you know, you're not in a car, and you arrive in the park and you meet the person. I always tell to my people, you have Greenish time, and then you have Venice time. <laughs> <laughs> That's That's true, no? Because sometimes you meet on, uh, yeah, just, you are in a you are doing a bridge and you meet someone and you cannot see okay bye bye just okay, you have to stop a little bit just uh, say something and what I say to the, to my guests when they come I say uh, it's a different way to live Venice because uh, uh, most of the time if you work in an office or if you do something for example you go to gym uh, you uh, go out from the office at, at that time not six o'clock at five o'clock you try to go home and you always meet someone that you know. <laughs> someone that you know that asks you how was your day no because you say uh, yeah, and sometimes uh, you say oh everything well so my family's well but, but, but sometimes you have something to complain no job uh, family kids uh, yeah friends uh, and so uh, the, 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 the very nice thing is that you are invited to share a spritz okay let's go for a spritz you cannot stay half an hour discussing some <laughs> something on a beach okay let's go for a spritz uh, and so this is the reason why this time is different in Venice. Like, I, I, and I, for example i love another thing when we do in venice when we pull the signs out of doors we'll be back in 20 minutes but they don't tell you when my, the sign doesn't say at uh, what time it was coming. So it's like uh, uh you've been waiting like for half an hour and you go like wasn't it supposed 20 minutes from where <laughs> i love that i really love i love it oh. Also, this one so would be a good choice and a very different way to to look at the, to look at the cities. So okay, that's all. Cool. We're saying obviously, if you're from abroad, we understand that Amazon is gonna be the only way to get this book. But when they come back to Venice, because people will come back to Venice, where should they go to go and get this book? Oh, we have libraries in Venice, so you can find Bookshop, bookshops. Yes, sorry, bookshops in Venice. So most of the book you can find on uh, in um, Campo Santa Margherita at Libreria Marco Polo. I love the guys that are the owner of the library, and uh, so you can find most of bookshop, the book. Uh, bookshop. A book. Uh, see, uh, right. <laughs> yeah. they got, they got a little bookshop on the Giudecca, right? Yes, they have also a bookshop on the Giudecca. And also, if you are, uh, I don't, have, I don't have so many books about. But if you are, for example, interested in uh, uh, sea stuff, uh, lagoon stuff, there is also a bookshop dedicated to that kind of stuff. That is uh, uh, Liberia Mare di Carta. Okay. So that then, we, then, we go, yeah, then we got the beautiful Liberia La Toletta. Yes. Well, the yeah. books, uh, most of the books are on discount, so you can find this also on discount. Mm -hmm. uh, you have got uh, the Venice Studio. Yes, so you have got Venice Studio. There is also a nice uh, bookshop in Calle dei Fabri, that is Goldoni. So, so them, they have very uh, good, uh, yeah, they have a, a huge amount of English, so you can find a lot of stuff up there. Okay, so in, in Venice, of, uh, right now, one beautiful thing that the bookshop, uh, the bookstores that are open are doing is 
they deliver the books, yeah. the missions, right? Yes, so, I think is uh, at the beginning they were not, uh, yeah, they were not supposed to organize it. It was, uh, yeah, they don't understand if we can do or not do it. Uh, but I think that most of the yeah all the people, but also the people that they are at home, they are reading a lot. So the Toleta started with that uh, with the delivery. So there was uh, they was going around to Venice, imagine with uh, books and uh, and evaporati or uh, just walking in the city. Uh, but starting from this week, uh, this week also Marco Polo books or bookshop they are doing that. So we can uh, yeah we can uh, also continue reading and not. Uh, yeah, supporting the big, uh, yeah, the big change, but also the exactly. uh, Why did I ask you this? Because you actually just written a, a post about uh, life in Venice right now, what's yeah. going on, uh, but uh, it's translated, so you can actually read it on my, uh, on my uh, yes. website, on my blog, blog, but it's actually written by uh, Romania in Italia on their website. I literally just translated it and put it in because they were so well written. And it came out of a conversation where we've been having for the last couple of weeks yes. about the image that is being given out at the moment of Venice, an image that many of us, or I would say most of us, are not very happy. No. Can you explain? Since uh, it was Yes, uh, the, I think that uh, yeah, in the last years uh, we suffered about some problems in Venice, with the problem of over tourism, uh, the, the fact that uh, yeah, Venice was full of people in the summer season, and that was a problem of uh, uh, how the city was seen from the from the other part of the world. Uh, so a lot of friends of us, for example, now they say, okay, I have to come or I don't have to come, no, because if I'm if I don't want to um, be a problem for the Venetian, so I don't come. So that was yeah. a problem. Uh, and then in November we have the, had the high time that was another big issue for the city, yeah, because uh, it's not easy to explain to the people that high tide was just for, you say, a few days. Uh, it was a very bad. I don't, uh, I don't yeah. try to say it's, uh, it was not a problem. It was very bad, but it was uh, just for a few days, and then after one month, everything was still uh, like the. the yeah, before in Venice. Yeah. And then it's come the, the virus, so the coronavirus. And as you can imagine, Venice is empty, like most of the city around the world at this moment. Uh, so I say, uh, since I'm, look, I'm seeing a lot of picture of Venice empty, it's not the Venice I want to see. Uh, not because it's not beautiful, because it's obviously is beautiful, but I think that a city is not, uh, it's not just the movement, but it's the community. Is, and it's uh, not just the buildings, it's not just the buildings, that's what people, I mean, yes. for example, I agree with you, they were beautiful at the beginning, the pictures, and that's the pictures that all these years, we always were trying to snatch in, in between the crowds, yeah, yeah, yeah. but uh, you, it was also right to do it in that moment, because when you have the crowds, it was nice to see nobody around, but at a moment like now, we need to show that a different Venice. And you know, right, okay. yeah, she's like la batteria di nuovo. Every song when you hear, che è successo? No, no, vabbè, no, non è un problema. Eh, yes, so the, the city is not just the monuments and the history, it's the community that are in, in town. And so, since the community is uh, the community, the people that are managing uh, to, to do the best for, for the city, so uh, I say, library was talking bookstore we were talking about, uh, some uh, association of younger people. They are uh, going to do the, um, to, to buy food and then they, they are going to the, to the house of the older people to order. Yeah, they do delivery. Yeah, they delivery. delivery. Yeah. And also a lot of activities that they don't do the delivery before, they are organizing it. So they are organizing the delivery. And so it's like, why don't you uh, tell to the people, or the, the people that love Venice, all around the world that Venice, uh, they are doing great. So in, the, in, this, in this difficult time, they are doing considering great. Considering the, 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 the best. Considering the lower amount of residents, considering yeah. all these years, all the shops were closed down because the authority uh, favored uh, uh, a money-making machine rather than a, uh, you know, uh, the city and its citizen. It's amazing how the Venetians are coping. 
because these are people that find they don't have uh, they have very few small little shops left yes. very, you know everything was catered for tourists in the last five or six years so it's amazing and yeah. they are you know resilient i don't as I, I, I said it before i don't like to use this word but in this case it is <laughs> it's not correct and i think yeah. that uh, yeah uh, the people that love Ven that love venice it's not just the people that are just 10 kilometers from venice but are the people all around the globe uh, that we're happy to know that that we're happy that the city is managing very well because also i was thinking about me you now if uh, i love madrid what is happening in madrid right now is terrible and so if i know that there are some people that are taking care so they are doing their best i'm happy to hear that and so i have to tell to the people around the world venice in this terrible moment is is try to do their the best the, their best to manage the situation uh it's not a thing that uh, you can find the next time you will come because next time you will come there will be people we are not selling venice empty it's not the thing that i i, I would like to, to sell but I'm trying to uh, tell what Venice is uh, uh, behind the monument. So Venice is a community of people, it's not just a monument. And so I want that the people, they know that, uh, yeah, that, that, that this, is, this is the situation. Yeah, yeah, of course. And, it's, and that's why we go, let's say, not upset, not annoyed, but a bit, mm, okay. <laughs> When we were told, when we are, when uh, you and, and me, we asked uh, uh, to the uh, authority, what actually, why everybody else in the world that are communicating that, uh, yes, right now everything is suspended, but we're still here and we will be here when everything is finally open. Uh, and we are not doing that. I mean, as I said, Venice is missing in action right now. Yes. And it's completely, and it needs Venice itself because. I already was watching even my own area, and you know, I live outside of Venice, mm -hmm. and the mayor is very involved. Look at Treviso. Treviso, they're doing a great amount of communication. They do all the communication right now is about the art, uh, the museum. They got every day a museum or, or an exhibition telling, talking to people. So I know that the museum in Venice are doing that as well, but they're not doing it as Venice. Yeah. That's a every single monument every single museum they're doing a great job i don't deny that because i'm following them and they're very good all of them but it's not coming out as the city of venice it's coming out as that part of venice the willing of the museum yeah exactly and it shouldn't be when he said when i look at treviso what i see is the city of treviso the, uh, the mayor doing something, the, the museum doing something every day is, you know, and showing the solidarity and this. And I think that is the problem right now. And that's what I think that's what we were trying to say to the, to the mayor and to yeah. the... Yeah, yeah, it's not a, 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 a just criticism. <laughs> yeah, it's not a criticism. It's just, uh, yeah, uh, I try to help our city to do something. Uh, we are at disposal if we decided or oh, they need help. Uh, uh, so they can yeah talk with the people that are in the business and try to do our best to, to help the city. It's not a criticism; it's just a way to help. Uh, you know, yeah, yeah. But uh, but the answer we got is uh, well, we decided it's too early and like uh, we already handling it. Like uh, we don't really have nothing to do with you, and so well, we carry on doing what we've been doing uh, all, all along now. But it was uh, I think it was very interesting about seeing is all of a sudden you know I, I, I particularly like because I'm trying to follow my friends and everything. We so working. So if I was reading today, people that are not uh, you know that are old or disabled and stuff so there is a system by which the food is delivered to their home uh you know by the various things you have um, i don't know so many various events as in online events of yeah. course our organization that are trying to you know and uh, i think it's very nice for the venetians because it shows that venice still allowed a kick in it's just i think it was dormant <laughs> the tourist was dormant so finally is woken up again so i hope uh, i just hope we're not gonna go back to what it was like uh, for the last five years yeah we have, uh, to, yeah, we have to imagine a different uh, a different city but before imagining we have to discuss it uh, no to, to 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 
put the people talking about it. So I'm a bit worried though, because I was listening, for example, the other day to Alberto Tosofai talking to uh, Marco Vidal, the Merchant of Venice, and they say they were saying saying exactly the same things that we were saying, you know, that Venice right now, we should be concentrating on the local businesses, on the local uh, artisans, that's the people, that's the only people that can bring out Venice again, you know, uh, to the local organization, to the local, the traditions, you know, like uh, the bolts, uh, the, uh, you know, the rowing and the cooking and this and that. But I got the feeling that on one side, there is, all this big part of us that understood that uh, we have got to work together if we want to work again. Yeah. But I, I have a feeling on the other side, yes, and we need more residences. But yeah, but the more residents only come when they see that things are, you know, that you, there are the services and there are the shops and stuff. So it's all like, a, as that what I was saying on the uh, with David, uh, David Rocco, is uh, a, a dog that bites his own tail. You know, uh, you need to break, you you need to stop the dog from biting his tail. You need to help him, and then uh, he starts again. But I have a feeling that from the, I have this feeling from on the other side there is just this tunnel vision uh of uh i don't know i was listening today to the mayor and he was saying oh he's gonna write names down of all the people that went against him but i think he's a bit illegal anyway but apart from that um why if people are criticizing you if you are a, a big man if you're a great politician i think from criticism i should take them and learn not automatically think because somebody gives you a suggestion criticize you you have to go on the defensive. No, no, that's that no, no, should... I was saying that no, it's a, it's a way to help the city and to criticize exactly. uh, the other, they are doing that or probably say, okay, they are uh, thinking other stuff, you know, the, 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 to help the people, money, yeah, the, the problem of the, econo the economical problem. Um, proper housing, affordable yeah. housing for young people, older yeah. people, and now that every, you know, uh, students, we have a massive, uh, one of the biggest universities in Italy, and the students cannot afford to stay in Venice because it's so expensive. So but I, I think if all, all of those things were addressed and the, the, um, what do you call, the net of the citizen is rebuilt, then automatically the tourists will be reduced and it will be only a certain type of tourist that will come. Yes, that's mm -hmm. it. Yeah, but uh, I don't know are we if they ever gonna listen to us. <laughs> I don't know. I don't think so. <laughs> uh, but we will, we will continue doing that. So we will continue telling the storytelling about Venice, yeah. and uh, let's see if uh, we can uh, we can help in this way. My battery oh. think is uh, going. Uh, the battery is feeling twenty time too. So, uh, what are we wearing today? Oh, oh you're not. Yeah, yeah. I'm wearing. Earrings of my a friend of mine is uh, an artisan uh, in uh, here in um, Campalto, that is my village actually. Mm -hmm. And they are, uh, yeah, the shape uh, as you can see, the shape of Venice. Of Venice, Venice is a fish. Venice is a fish, yes. Exactly. And the, 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 yeah, the, they were they were a present uh, some years ago, uh, just for me, and then he, uh, she decided to. To start the production of this. That's good. That's good. Okay, can we see where your social media is? Have you done your paper? Oh yeah, have you done it right? Here we go. So where can we find no? It's the other way around. <laughs> okay, I'll tell people. Okay, where do we find Romana? It's Rome in Venice. She's practically roaming Venice on every single social media. So you find her on Twitter, you find her on Instagram, you find her on Facebook as Rom in Venice. Dot com of course um so have we shall we book you for in a couple of weeks time and talk about some yeah. shall we talk about wine or shall we talk about food or, or, or about books uh we can talk about wine <laughs> okay that'd be good because that, of course the year, so okay local bottles i hope romana yes. is in the sommelier, so she was my teacher. So we can talk about wine, that would be nice. So we can talk also about the situation of the uh, Veneto region and wine right now and everything. Good. Romana, it was a pleasure. 
it was so nice talking to you. Go back to your charging your phone before it dies. <laughs> a couple of weeks, then, and we'll see uh, the size of your hair as well. You're probably gonna. Yes, I will be prepared. <laughs> Ciao, Cara. Ciao, thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you.